All right, so the last topic we're going to go over before your test upcoming is tropisms. So on the agenda, the first thing you need to do is do your attendance form and your contact tracing if you are in person. Then you're going to do this ad puzzle on tropisms. You're going to complete your interactive notebook and make sure you turn it in so that you can get credit and get it graded. And then lastly, there is an exit ticket on tropisms as well attached to the Google post. So first question I want to ask you and you can answer it. Have you ever seen a plant move on its own? And if you did, what kind of plant was it? The second question I want to ask is, do all plants have the ability to move? So some of you all may have answered before that you have seen it in real life or in videos where you've seen like Venus flytraps, right? You've seen plants move before, but do we think that all plants have the ability to move? And we'll go over that today when we go over tropisms. So learners will be able to identify and explain the types of ways plants respond to their environment by completing this ed puzzle and their interactive notebook. Um, and make sure you turn it in again because after this we have a review and a test. So we're not going to be doing any more interactive journal for this week. So tropisms. The definition of a tropism is the bending or turning of a plant in response to stimuli. Okay, remember stimuli means anything that is affecting um, an organism from the outside environment. Actually, it can also be internal, but generally when we're talking about plants, we're talking about external stimuli or external factors that are affecting the plant. So when a plant turns toward a stimulus, so if a plant starts to face a stimulus or to face a factor, that means that tropism is positive, right? The plant likes it, so it's going to go towards it. It's a positive stimulus, right? The plant likes it. So it's positive. When a plant turns away from a stimulus or goes away from a factor in the environment, that tropism is negative, right? If you don't like something, you're going to go away from it. That's a negative response because you don't like it. Does that make sense? Tropism that, uh, sorry, the first tropism that we're going to go over is called phototropism. So before we talk about the actual tropism, let's go over what the prefix means. Right. So if we talk about phototropism, what do you think the prefix photo means? Now, I don't want you to think of when you shorten like the word for photograph into photo. That's not exactly what we're going for. Right. When you take photographs, you got to use flash. When you do photosynthesis as a plant, you need sunlight energy. So what does the prefix photo really mean? Yeah, it means light. Okay, so phototropism is plants responding to the stimulus of light. Okay, so phototropism is usually a positive tropism. So that means plants will turn towards the light because they need that resource to grow, to make food, to survive. So they like it, right? So it's a positive reaction and they're going to turn toward the light or whatever light source that you provide it. So examples are sunflowers. If you look at sunflower fields, they will actually turn to face the sun based on what time of day it is. So you can see them turn to face the sun based on what time of day it is. And it's kind of interesting and a little bit creepy when there's a huge field of them. Okay. So here you can see pictures of plants where if they were given uneven sources of light, like the light's not coming from above, but it's only coming from the left side. And the plant actually is going to lean towards the left side to go towards wherever the sunlight is coming from because that way if it goes towards it it gets closer to it and it gets more sunlight energy the next one we're going to go over is called gravitropism or geotropism right when i say gravitropism what is the first word that pops into your head right it's gravity and it's written right here on the page so the stimulus here is gravity we also say geotropism because gravity is a uh, a characteristic of the earth, right? And geo is the study of earth. So we also say geotropism. So plants like to grow up. That's just how they're built because when they grow up, they know that they're gonna be getting their water from their roots because water tends to flow down and they're gonna be able to get light energy with their leaves that are facing up. So plants tend to like to grow upwards. Now, sometimes they end up in weird environments where they're planted in a seed that's on a concave or an upside down surface. And so plants will actually slowly, slowly, slowly grow down and then they will 
a U-turn and curve back up to be facing upright for at least part of the plant, right? So if you look at this picture, plants can actually sense gravity and they'll make sure that their roots eventually grow down and their stem and their leaves eventually go up so that they can be getting water from their roots at the bottom and they can be getting sunlight from their leaves going up. So again, this is a positive reaction, right? Plants are growing up against gravity because they can sense it. Thigmotropism. So thigmotropism is the tropism of touch, okay? So the stimulus here is that the plant can actually tell when it's pressed against or touching another surface, okay? So the key thing about thigmotropism is that this is a permanent change, right? So you'll see this in a lot of vines, you'll see this in pumpkins, you'll see it in watermelons, you'll see it in grapes, right? Grapes can literally crawl up an entire rack in order to grow towards the sunlight. And the whole reason, again, like I just said, they're growing upwards and trying to grab onto things to grow even higher and higher and higher is because the higher you are, the more sunlight you're gonna get. So thigmotropism is actually kind of based off of phototropism, right? Thigmotropism is going to cause a permanent change. Now, these vines are coiled around this plastic stake. If you take the stake away, the vine will still be in that permanent coiled shape. It's not going to just revert back into a straight plant. Okay, so thigmotropism causes permanent changes to the plant as it's growing. And the way that it works is that when it's trying to climb up something, whatever, whichever side of the plant that it's touching, it's going to keep growing towards the side that it's touching because it knows as long as it makes contact, it will have something to lean against as it's growing up. If you've ever looked at grapevines or anything or pumpkin vines, you know that vines are actually very soft, green parts of the plant. So if you take them without support, they actually just fall over or they'll break, right? So that's actually bad for the plant. They will grow as they are supported. And as long as they stay on the support, then they can be growing continually upwards. And that's why they're going to be partial and they're going to like touching a surface that they can lean against as they prop themselves and grow upwards. Here is one that is technically not a tropism, but it is a response to a stimulus. So this is also a response to the touch stimulus, but this one is instantaneous. So nastic movement is literally actually movement. Okay, so it is the movement that is repeatable and reversible. And it's essentially upon being touched, a plant then retracts water from its cells and causes things to close, or to move in on itself to protect itself, okay? So you also see this in the Venus flytrap. And the Venus flytrap, when you touch it, it reacts as if a food source has come in. And so it's gonna close its trap and then it's going to digest its insect that landed in there, okay? Mimosa pudica is a plant that it does not actually do um, nastic movement in order to grab food, but it's actually to protect its um, leaves from breaking off. So let me pull up a video real quick, actually. So we're going to look at this video of Mimosa pudica and when you load it, you can actually see that when you touch the plant or it comes in contact with anything, it slowly closes its leaves. And this is a protection instinct that it has. This nastic movement is closing the leaves so that it's not going to be banging against or coming in contact with anything that could potentially damage it, okay? It is reversible. The plant doesn't close and become permanently closed, right? You know, Venus flytraps will reopen eventually when they need a new food source or a new insect to capture it for the protein, right? So Mimosa pudica will open up again eventually because it needs to still collect sunlight to do photosynthesis with its leaves. But it'll do it after a certain period of time when the danger of getting brushed and hit and breaking the leaves has left. Okay, so that's all we have for tropisms and plant responses to the environment. Make sure again that you do your interactive notebook and that you finish it and turn it in so that it can be graded because following today we have a review and a test so we're no longer be going to be working on the uh, interactive journals.